80-20 for your health. Focus on this short list of 10 things. Build them into routines, habits in your life, and then achieve the body health of your dreams. It's really that simple. But you have to have core foundational principles. You have to have a holistic view, which is a whole view to your health and your body. If you're trying to lose weight, if you wanna perform, and any one of these 10 principles is lacking, that just pulls everything down. They're all connected. If your sleep is lacking, then your focus, your mindset, but also your physical ability to perform is weakened. Health is not complicated. We do know what is best. We do know what the first principles are. And everything else that's trying to sell you something, some new program thing, app modality, most of the time, for most people, not everybody, it's a distraction, and they're just trying to profit from your confusion. And unfortunately, a lot of people think they're gonna buy a magic pill, and so every new shiny object that comes along in the fitness or health or diet space, people buy it because they think they can buy results. You can't buy results. You earn results. You can't buy health. You earn health. If you're not interested in earning your health, if you don't care about your health enough to put in the effort to say no to certain pleasures, then stop watching the video right now because the video isn't for you. Because what I'm gonna give you in this, this short list of 10 things, I'm gonna give you a list of things that you have to do that you have to build into routines and habits in your life. And then you can achieve the health and body of your dreams and probably the success of your dreams become anybody because this is the foundation to life. If you think about life as a single player game, because it pretty much is, you're born alone, you die alone, et cetera. If life is a game and you are the avatar that you're continually trying to level up, right? Some people take games very seriously, but then they don't take the most important game of all, which is their life, seriously. It's so bizarre to me. The 10 first principles for human health. You're 80 20, meaning 80% of your results are going to come from this short list of 20% things. I mean, really, it's like the 95%, the 95% of things that move the needle for your health and fitness. The 5% are all the gadgets and gimmicks and new diets and this and that that might give you a little bit of an edge here and there if you sustain them. If you look at the power law, you're ignoring the 95%, which is gonna get your results faster and easier. And you're focusing on the 5%, mostly because you think that you can buy results. Just don't do that. Let's go through these real quick. I don't need to expand on these massively because they're pretty obvious. You probably already know what you need to do. The difference here between you and someone else or your current self and your future self or your past self, your current self, whatever, is what are you gonna do with this information? Are you gonna take the actions? That's the only thing that matters. One, real food. That's at home, raw, real ingredients cooked at home. Now for the average person, if all they did was cook their food at home from reasonably quality ingredients, we would end obesity overnight and heart disease and cancer would basically be small percentage things. Not restaurant. Restaurant food is not real food. Restaurant food is almost always cooked in seed oils or drenched in it. Preservatives, extra sugar, other things. Things you don't even know. You don't even know how it's handled. <laughs> like, You won't believe what goes on in kitchens. I've worked in kitchens. Ask anybody that's worked in kitchens. Most of them, it's like uh, something they just don't talk about. It's like taboo to talk about, but everybody knows it. And then people that go there to the restaurants just pretend that it's fine because out of sight, out of mind, and they just want their tasty food. Real food at home cooked from raw, real ingredients. It's the only thing that matters. If you did a 90-day challenge with yourself to not eat anything outside of your home or out of a package or at a restaurant. You brought everything home and you cooked it. You'd have that habit so ingrained that you probably would maintain it forever. And then yeah, like go out once a weekend maybe and have a nice cheat meal, call it a cheat meal if you will, not a big deal. The key is what you do with the 95% of your time. Real food at home, most important thing. Two, movement, moving as much as possible, getting outside, walking, taking the stairs, Every time I fly, I see all these people waiting in line for an escalator. It's like, think about just how ridiculously lazy and even slothful that is. So you're waiting in line, you're standing so that you can get on a machine that you then stand on that then propels you to the bottom or up when you could have just used your freaking feet. So yes, it's slothful, it's lazy, it's insane, but this is the biological imperative for our species. Our species is designed to conserve energy right? Because in the wild, energy was scarce. We had to go out and get it. Some days we would maybe go without food. This made our species very innately afraid of expending energy, especially when there wasn't maybe like food or sex or some kind of evolutionarily positive beneficial reward at play. So like if you're walking through an airport and, you know, maybe in fact, if you're walking to go get food and you wanted to get in food fast 
uh, in line because you didn't have a lot of time, I guarantee you, you'd be taking the stairs. It's just like kind of one example because you have pr- these certain pressures, right? You need to go get the food. You want the food, you're hungry. And so that gives you imperatives to then take the stairs instead of the escalator. Move as much as possible. Park at the end of the parking lot. Uh, take the stairs. Purposefully take the path of most resistance, right? Think about this real quick. Our ancestors had to take the path of least resistance. They had to conserve energy because energy was scarce. Our environment today, energy is abundant. It's everywhere. I mean, just in my room, I'm looking at some products here in my office. I got like thousands of calories. I got some MCT oil, that's like 500 calories. I got some tuna right here, that's a few hundred calories, a few pouches. Energy is on demand, always available. And in that environment, the best evolutionary strategy is to take the path of most resistance, move. It also gets you out of chairs, which is better for your back, your body, your mobility, everything. Three, nature. Now, if you can move in nature, that's even better. If you can eat real food in nature, then move and then be in nature, listen to the sight sounds and whatever, birds chirping, all these things, seeing green, it's all good for your biology. There's a bunch of research on this. Detach from your phones, be present in the moment. Amazing for your, especially your mental health, but also your physical health. Walk barefoot, lay on the ground, roll around, get dirty, get dirt on your fingernails, in your mouth. These are all things that are natural to our species. And we've created this environment that's artificial, that's sterilized, it's insanity. And all of these dumb human interventions lead to more fragility, which are gonna lead to more things like the 2020 thing happening, but even worse, and people are gonna then cower and believe they can wear a mask and do all these things and it's gonna save them. It's completely and utterly backwards. Most people should have taken 2020 as an opportunity to expose themselves to something that has a very, very, very low probability of actually killing them so that they can then be more robust, potentially even anti-fragile to what's going to happen in the future because something like this will happen in the future. Uh, We're all exposed to new things. Nature's constantly evolving. Some species die off, some evolve, some grow, some adapt, etc. Again, take opportunity to stress your body to become more anti-fragile. Top for another day. Community, people, humans are tribal creatures. We see this in politics for the bad and the good. But if you get people in a room and you remove all those labels, all that tribalism, people are very much the same and have a lot of the same goals. Because again, we're the same animal. (laughs) Spend time with people you care about. Avoid tribalism and us versus them and viewing people and judging them and all that nonsense. Happiness will skyrocket to the moon. Avoid consistent doses of poison. So in our environment, there's artificial everything. Like all this stuff that's been made in China and whatever, is probably off-gassing things. It's probably like rubbing off, getting in my hands, getting in my mouth. And all these toxins are going into my body and they're stressors that my body has to then process out. Uh, They've done some research where they've tested, I believe, uh, the Inuit today, which still live like traditional Inuit uh, have for thousands of years in the North Pole. And it's estimated that the Inuit and the, from the fish and the seafood that they eat, the, the lions, et cetera, have like some percent of their entire body are these microplastics and microtoxins, like insane things like that, right? There's actually a good book on this, The Chemical Age, which I've only read a few chapters of, but I need to finish. So for me, I don't believe in climate change for the environmentalist perspective. I believe that our climate has been changing because it has for billions of years and will continue to change for as long as it's here. Climate change is real. Whether man, us, can ha- really affect it in any way is a, based on a lot of really bad pseudoscience, actually, if you actually di- dig into it, right? And a lot of really bad narratives and other nonsense. That being said, the pollution of chemicals and plastics and these other man-made things that basically get into the environment and that can't be destroyed, that to me, I feel like is probably the real problem we need to be worried about. Now, I don't know how to gauge the threats and everything, but I'm very much a believer of the organic, like save our soil, you know, our food is everything. I mean, I think climate change is a perfect example of like focusing on the wrong thing because it's politicized, because a lot of bad science has been, you know, built around it because people have built careers about being the uh, climate alarmists, et cetera that I think most people don't even think about the chemical and the plastics and these other toxins that are in our environment everywhere. I think that's the real danger. Seven, negativity is killer. 
You're not going to be perfect with this. Your friends, family aren't going to be perfect. People aren't going to be perfect. But your species, our, my species, our species, has a negativity bias. It kept our ancestors safe. We had to always assume there was danger. It made us to be kind of negative with certain things, with certain risks, with certain, like the future, etc. We pick out the negative. Today, in a world where there's information always on demand and we can kind of read and write things and really shape our reality by the content we consume and the people we spend time with, we can easily succumb to negativity and complaining and victimhood and all this nonsense. And then that becomes our identity and we join groups and then we get tribalism and then we just get more and more of it. And guess what? Negative people are more at risk for death and disease than not negative people. Positivity is one of the best things you can do for your long-term health. It's actually something I haven't really talked about a lot that now just writing this as I was writing this out, I, I realized that positivity is a health strategy. Positivity is a health prevention strategy, a, a disease mitigator, disease prevention. Positivity does everything. It also makes you more likely to make money and attract people and be charismatic, et cetera. Negativity is killer. It's a negative drain that brings more of it. Positivity brings more abundance and positivity through the law of attraction and quantum mechanics and all these different things. Whether you believe in law of attraction or not, you get what you consume, you become what you think, you become the average of the people around you, you become your environment. And if you are putting out negativity into your environment, your, ne your environment will give you negativity back and then you'll just be swimming in a pool of negativity is what it is. Try this, start smiling at random strangers. Some people will be so caught off guard, they'll be like, oh my, who's that creep? Or what are they doing? They're crazy. And a lot of people will smile back. It'll become an instinctual thing. And then you get in the habit of smiling to people and walking around with a smile and people will just naturally be drawn to your energy and they'll smile back. If that's not a perfect example of the law of attraction or quantum mechanics or whatever you want to call it, then I don't know what it is. Just call it cause and effect. People like smiling and being happy, but generally they need a reason. They need a cue from their environment to do that. Sleep eight hours a night. This would probably actually go under real food if we were ordering these in importance level. I'm not really ordering these in any hierarchical level. Uh, sleep is one of those first principles of health that if you forego sleep, you will pay major consequences in your performance, your health, your happiness, your mindset, your your recovery, everything. The idea that you can like forego sleep to like get more done or what, it's just so ridiculous. You're better off with 16 well-rested hours than like two full days of partially sleep deprived or sleep deprived hours. Like, it's not even close. Prioritize sleep, pitch black room, get sound machines, black out your windows, and then try to go to bed at the same time every night. Turn devices off at night, use candlelight, use orange light, uh, use Kindle to reading instead of being on a device. Don't watch Netflix or, or certain shows that kind of heighten you and wake you, wake you up. Prioritize sleep or you'll pay a cost. We got two more left, stress mitigation. Do everything you can to mitigate stress, especially the nagging chronic stress that has become an epidemic in modern human life. Worry, anxiety, stress, these are probably the most prevalent, constant inner states for modern humans. And it is a result of being taken out of nature, out of a tribal setting, out of our environment that mother nature programmed us to thrive in, and then going into modernity with planes, trains, automobiles, and concrete, and toxins, and food on demand, et cetera. You need to do everything you can. Meditation, mindfulness, therapy, like whatever you can do to mitigate stress is gonna have a huge impact on your current results and happiness in life, but also your long-term. Finally, number 10, play, laugh, have fun. Now, this is something that I have to prioritize or I get too serious especially having kids and getting into like make money and protect our family mode. It's made me more focused on that. It's made me more irritable, less patient. And I mean, fortunately kids, especially when they're young, they, they force you to kind of be in the moment and be happy. So I'm super grateful for that. But I need to apply that to the rest of my life. When I'm just like at a coffee shop out and about, I need to smile more, be like, you know, more friendly, more talkative. I was never really a small talker type person. I'm more of a talk to close friends and family person but there's opportunity and benefit and just opening up and being more uh, happy and fun, jovial, right? Uh, playing more, getting outside, running around, playing like a kid, playing with my kids, just joking with friends and family, whatever. I don't wanna lose that. I feel like as we get older, we lose that. So for me, that's a conscious thing I'm working on. This is 10 principles that represents about 95% of what you need to be a healthy, thriving human. I would probably even say like 99%. 
You could pretty much ignore every other book, gadget, app, device that can, that will ever come out for the rest of your life. If you did just these things and you kept it stupid simple, you will have the body health and longevity of your dreams. The only threat to you will then be getting hit by a bus, basically. And you won't be afraid of any boogie virus. I promise you that. I hope you like this video. Share it with a friend. Get on the Better Human newsletter over at Colin.coach. If you want to learn more about my anti-fragile program to build a anti-fragile sovereign way of life for your health, your wealth, your mindset, and your physical safety, head over to IamAntiFragile.com. I'll see you in the next one.